Hey YouTubers, 95 Speed GTA, and uh, well, we're going to be taking the van uh, out of commission for at least uh, maybe a day or two, or maybe even a week. Um, well, she's got uh, just shy of 184,000 miles on her, and uh, well, she's got some problems. She's got a motor mount that's collapsing, well it has collapsed, another motor mount that's completely destroyed. A transmission mount that's seen better days, and a mount in the back that I'm really not too sure of. But anyway, we're going to do a little bit of an overhaul. Um, I purchased new valve cover gaskets, and a new intake plenum gasket, and a lower intake manifold gasket. Uh, if you could see over there, the wetness over there, <coughs> excuse me, the... Um, intake the lower intake manifold valley gasket is leaking so what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna drain the fluids out of it and uh, we're gonna do some top end work um, this is gonna be a pretty lengthy video so what I'm gonna do is not make it a lengthy 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 video and I'm gonna split it up until parts in two parts so this is gonna be part one and uh, I guess we'll have part two or part three I don't really usually like making long videos, so, uh, you know, only if they're like episodes or something like that. So, anyway, let's start off. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to start getting rid of some stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to get the air box off. For any of you that haven't done this before, um, you got two 10 millimeter screws right here. And you have um, your little breather here for the uh, crankcase. No, not crankcase, valve cover gasket. Uh, valve cover, and um, I already did a little loosening here, but uh, you could use a flathead or I think a 7 millimeter, and you're going to have one one here and one here. Uh, what I would do is uh, just disconnect it from here, whatever is easier, and uh, unloosen it. Uh, here's your air box down here. Uh, if you can get to the clips, uh, that would be pretty easy. You just got to undo the two clips. You could possibly get them from here. You're going to want to pull the air box out. Alright, so those two clips I was talking about, it actually is pretty easy to get to. So if you have the air cleaner like that, you want to take your hand and you want to put it in over here. And you can undo the two clips, loosen that one up, get the air box out of the way. That's actually a silencer, believe it or not, uh, for the airflow. And your, air, your actual air filter is down here. I know, what a pain in the ass, right? I'm actually going to be taking this out because I'm going to be changing the radiator too. The radiator, I've got to pull this up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that right there, but that's all that wet stuff right there. Well, it's got a broken core. I've got a lot of stuff to do. I've got to fix the headlight again because of my stupidity. I hit into a junk car just for fun and I broke it again. And it actually broke the same way that it broke last time. So I'll just be getting my plastic weld and I'll be able to fix it. All right, so uh, we cleared a big space, huh? <laughs> All right, uh, next on the list is, um, well, I'm going to, well, I loosened this already, so I'm going to take that out. Ow, damn it. <laughs> All right, so we got the air box and everything done. Now let's remove the battery. So how are we going to start to break this down? Well, I've never, ever done this on a 3.3 before so this is all new to me so let's think about the options alright so if you're thinking okay well let me start by taking the valve cover gas uh, the valve cover off well you really can't the fuel rail is in the way in the front and actually the fuel rail isn't as complex as I thought it was um, the only thing that's holding it on are uh, that bolt right there and that bolt right there and it goes around same deal and then right down there you have a quick a quick disconnect I gotta go get the quick disconnect tool that's gonna be fun I haven't used that in years and uh, so what you're gonna want to do is uh, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to tear this down Plant them first. He's off. Take your 10 millimeter and take this off first. Oh, by the way, guys, 
when uh, you're taking down the coil pack, you're going to want to remove uh, the number four spark plug. Because if you're using something like this, and this is a Makita 18 volt, uh, well, pretty much uh, an electronic ratchet. <laughs> I love this thing, and it's really worth the 300 bucks. Um, if you're using something like this, you're going to want to take this out because it's going to get in the way and it just makes life easier. Alright, so now with that pushed out of the way, which hopefully that shouldn't be a problem, and I can just leave it the way, oh wow, these oil pan, uh, oh god, these valve cover gaskets are so bad. Holy shit. So... We're going to start by the, taking off the good old 3.3 liter plenum. And don't let all the bolts fool you. Um, it's only this one, this one, this one, and that one holding our plenum on. The other bolts are for the, uh, I guess for, yeah, is for the lower intake manifold. So, uh, let's see, what do we got in, in the way? Well, first we've got to take off all these vacuum lines and anything attached to it. So let's see, what do we got here? We got the throttle cable, which we're gonna have, the throttle and cruise control cable, which we're gonna have to remove. We got various vacuum lines. We got a real shitty vacuum line right here that we should, we're, I'm actually gonna replace. I didn't notice that until now. Some wires to disconnect. And, oh, thank God, I don't have no heater hoses going towards that. However, we do have an EGR hose right at the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's see if I can get the camera in there. There you go. Right here. We got, that looks like an EGR hose. It's still fairly warm. I don't know where that's going. But uh, that looks like a real big pain in the ass to remove. And hopefully when I get the plenum loose, it'll just come up with me. And I'll be able to manipulate it once I got the plenum up. But then again... In the world of 95-speed GTA, things usually don't pan out that way. Uh, also, right there, if you guys could see it, there's a bolt with a support rod that goes up on the plenum. You're going to have to remove that. And that looks like a 5 8 probably a 14 or 15 millimeter uh, bolt. And after that, we should be able to get it up. So, let's do it. Okay. So, so far, we removed the ignition coil. And uh, we removed the bracket on top of the alternator. Uh, I didn't remove the tension from the belt tensioner. And actually, it's actually not under, uh, not under load or anything like that. The bottom... The bottom bolt is what's holding the alternator together. Um, but what you want to do is leave that bolt in, uh, even though you know you can t you can take it out. But I would just leave it. Um, the alternator is not going to get in the way, but that bracket would have gotten in the way. Uh, I s I tried to see if I left it pointed upwards the bracket because what you're going to have is you're going to have uh, two bolts right here that you got to take out, and they're 10 millimeter. And uh, once you take it out, that um, that little plate, which is right here, that you got to take off, um, I left it. I left it upwards. But uh, once you get the plenum off, and once it comes time to taking the valve cover gaskets up, the valve covers off, uh, that may get in the way. So you don't want to have anything in the way while you're doing that. Even this might might become a problem, but I'll work around it. Um, so, getting to everything else, here's the fuel line. Look at that. Look at those cracks. That's not good. So, I'm going to want to get a new fuel line. And be careful when moving stuff like this out of the way, because as you can see, I broke it. i got to fix that. That's uh, the drainage to that. Also, uh, if you're not like me, where like I know where all these bolts came from, I could leave them up here. Uh, if you get confused by bolts, label them. Put them in a bag. Take pictures of before and after of the parts you take off, so you don't get yourself uh, screwed up. So now the last thing to remove that's going to be in my way 
is that uh, bracket right there that I showed you before and that looks like a 15 millimeter bolt and once I remove that uh, I'm gonna be well except for that little EGR thing on the bottom which I won't know about until we're able to pull a plenum I'm gonna remove the bolts remove the bolts and then it's gonna be time Oh, look at that there she's ready to come off so that's what she looks at looks like something really wrong with this camera today uh, believe it or not guys that um, that EGR thing that I was worried about if you got one of these you could actually get underneath there with it you don't gotta go crazy I actually just slipped it on slipped it right under like this and it was at one two three um, the only thing that sucked was that, uh, was that bolt that I was telling you about before. But look at that. Damn. Look at all of that gunk. I can't wait to see what the inside of this motor looks like. Alright, so, remember, vacuum lines, make sure everything is off. Um, there's a little restriction right now, and that's because it looks like there are some things like some wiring harnesses tied into it so be really careful when you're pulling this back uh, pull it forward and then put your hand behind there and see what's restricting it sometimes uh, excuse me guys I got my allergies are really bugging me today uh, sometimes you get like little harnesses that are connected like this a little plastic clip it'll just bust off anyway just like hear the sound of that it's all just old shit Okay, some of you out there are probably going to be like, what the hell? I can't get the plenum out now. What the hell's going on? Well, here's the thing. One thing that I find really annoying is the fact, and you guys have probably realized this already, is they strap the alternator wire to the back of this plenum. In order to remove that so you can take the plenum out, you need to disconnect uh, that nut, it's a 10 millimeter nut in the alternator, uh, it's the power wire, and once you disconnect it, it'll free the alternator up, I mean it'll free the plenum up, and you'll be able to pull it forward and further disconnect it. However, you got to do a couple of things before uh, you pull the plenum forward. First off, you gotta, you have to take off the fuel line. Okay, so, how did I do that so quickly, right? Well, this one's stuck. Oh, wait, I think we got it. There we go. All right. I want to tell you guys something about the fuel injectors. First off, since we're doing this, you got to buy the kit, the upper intake manifold kit, where it comes with the new fuel injector O-rings, the new plenum, which is this. This is the, this is the plenum gasket. This is how I took it off. There was only a little tiny bits and pieces left of the plenum. It was destroyed. And under here, under this, is the intake manifold valley gasket. You gotta make sure you get all this, because look at this. These are the O-rings. They're destroyed. They're shot. All of them were shot. So, and you're not gonna break them, but sometimes this will happen. And it's okay, nothing broke, it just came off its mounting part. And as you can see, that's how they all mount. So I just gotta fix that. It's not a big deal. But, uh, anyway, it even came off its gasket. Remember, there's gaskets inside the fuel rail, and there's gaskets outside the fuel rail. Now would be a good time to check all your injectors, and if you don't know how to check them, uh, there are shops that dedicate their time, well not dedicate their time, but uh, they're strictly fuel injection shops. Um, I have a friend that actually spe specializes just in fuel injection. So, uh, I'm going to get the quick disconnect, which I should have done, <laughs> but I want to take advantage of the daylight, and I'm going to disconnect that, and uh, well, I'm going to do a partial rebuild on the fuel rail, uh, starting off with that, and uh, I'm going to, like I said, i got to have my friend check the pulse of the injectors. Uh, now's the time to do all of this stuff. Even you got the you got your O2 sensor back there. Um, like I said, now is the time to change everything you could possibly think of. I have another car, so this is actually going to be apart for a while because I'm going to do some modifications and I'm going to play around with it. 
this is coming off too, so this is all going to get cleaned up inside. Um, remember, if you're doing this job, you got to do it right. Like I say in almost all my videos, your name is always on everything you do, so you got to do everything right. And uh, I cannot stress enough to replace these O-rings on each side, on the top and on the bottom. It's really important to do that. Um, don't be afraid when you pull uh, when you pull up the fuel rail if fuel comes spilling out. Remember, uh, the last time you drove it, there was fuel in it, so there's going to be gas in there. Um, also, uh, if you had just used the car, you're going to want to purge the fuel pressure out, and you do that by pressing on this. Wear some safety goggles. You could usually do this with a flathead screwdriver, or they actually have a purging device. Uh, this is what your well underneath what underneath your valve cover looks like, and there's your valve cover from your uh, other end, which uh, is pretty leaky. And uh, let's take a look at the gasket. Here's the old gasket. Well, that's the plenum gasket. This is the old uh, valve cover gasket, which isn't pretty bad. Actually, it's bad. <laughs> And another thing I noticed was when I was taking the bolts out of here, a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, were loose. And uh, this one was loose, and as you can see, that's where it was all draining onto the exhaust manifold. That's why we got that lovely smell anytime I turn the heat on. And right here as well, and here. So I'm going to take off the other valve cover gasket. We're going to check that out, and we're going to keep digging deeper. Because we got not only the valve cover gaskets and not only the plenum gasket, we also have the lower intake manifold. So this got come off. But look at that. Look how easily accessible everything is. As I said, now's the time to do a tune up, fix an alternator, fix your AC, <laughs> maybe even put a new exhaust system in. Who knows? There's so many things to fix here. There's also so many things to break back here. Oh my god. There's your an another, there's there's the other engine mount right here. What a pain in the ass. How are you supposed to get that? Oh, fucking weird guy in a Jeep. Wow. I'm definitely gonna get that while the engine's apart. That looks like a giant pain in the ass. How are you supposed to get that? I guess from underneath the car. Wow. Well, it's time for me to take some pictures. Also, I got a leak here in the exhaust. In this, uh, I guess, flex pipe or whatever you want to call it. Here's your transmission mount. That's right here. So, take advantage, guys. Uh Alright, so here we go. We kind of completed everything we wanted to do out of uh, part one of our video today. I took the plenum out, I took the uh, valve covers off, and I took the lower intake manifold off. And Here's what your engine looks like without the lower intake manifold in it. And this is the gasket. <laughs> A flimsy little thing like that. And it's held down by two 10, 10 mm screws. Which actually, uh, these little tabs right here, they come in your new kit, so uh, you can throw those out. But this is pretty much what it looks like. It's pretty clean inside there for 183,000 miles. Let's see if you guys can take a look. That's what the inside of your cylinder head looks like. And that thing you see right there is a push rod. And these are your rocker arms, which the cam spins inside the motor. And it pushes them up on the opposite side. And in time, each one gets pushed down. So this is what they look like. In case any of you have never seen that before. That's what it looks like inside an engine. I haven't fully decided yet if I'm going to take the cylinder heads off. But if I take the cylinder heads off, you guys will get to see what the pistons look like. Which is pretty cool because I know quite a few of my subscribers don't know anything about cars. And uh, they just like to see stuff. But uh... Here's our, uh, this is the back cylinder head. Here's the front. Here's our fuel rail. 
And finally, here's our plenum. And there's our lower intake manifold. So guys, uh, I left off, which you guys didn't see me do this, but let's say we're standing in front of the car. And here's our plenum. Very, very easy to take out. Uh, they're just 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, there's one here, one here, 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 and one right here. That's short, and you're not, unless, if you don't have uh, a tool or a socket deep enough to get the coolant uh, level sensor out, or I think this is the fan tab sensor, I'm not sure, but if you don't have one big enough, it's okay. Um, if you have a box wrench or anything, you could turn this, or if there, you can get a crow's foot in there, you could do that, and this is not a very long bolt like the rest of them, so you don't have to fully take it out. You just leave it in there like that. You see the size of the bolt? It's not really that big, but uh, you're going to want to take the bolt out because look at this. Look at the crud on it. You're going you're gonna to want to clean them. All the bolts you take out, and even this, you want to clean. All this crap in here, all this, all this, uh, you know, all this gunk and shit like that, you're going to want to clean. You're going to want to clean the ports for the fuel injector ports. Don't forget to do that. You have to do that. Um, the plenum, you're going to want to clean. Uh, I'm actually going to play around with the plenum. I think I'm going to try to port it. <laughs> Maybe get a few extra horses out of it. Uh, you want to scrape the old gasket off of this. Clean this up. Maybe even I'll consider getting a new EGR because that, that looks pretty uh, pretty old. So. so we got a lot of cleaning to do. Maybe we can give it a tune-up, replace some things back there. But that's where we're at. So YouTubers, this is uh, the final of part one of my YouTube video on uh, how to take the upper end off of your Chrysler 3.3 liter V6 apart. So YouTubers, 95 speed GTA, thanks for watching.